So, hello everybody. I am Tomáš Chvátal and I will give you some short information about what the spec cleaner is, what are our plans and basically how much we can fuck up your life if you are a packager. So, firstly, what is actually spec cleaner or spec cleaner or however you desire to call it? It's our tool that makes sure that all the packages we are producing in our distribution kind of look the same. You, you can ensure that all the definitions are in the same place across the board, all the conditionals are in one location, all the dependencies are sorted in some specific order. Well, now alpha alphabetically I think, but it can be changed. So if you desire some changes in there, you can basically say that A should be always on the line 32 and it will really be there. Uh, after that, we also use it to fix common issues. For example, we have plenty of packages that have conditionals from SLE 9 or SLE 10 ensuring that they build on power. That's kinda useless for current Tumbleweed or SLE 15. So the spec cleaner actually finds it, detects it and wipes it out. Alternatively, it also replaces some old commands with the new versions of them. So you can remove the craft. So in a case you are, for example, maintainer of Perl code base in OpenSUSE, you can decide that these syscalls are no longer to be used and tell spec cleaner this is a replacement A for B or even multiple variables and it will make it happen. Now, where we are using it? We are using it mostly as a packager, so anybody writing packages can run it on his own by using the command spec cleaner. But alternatively, Haskell people are running it for all the packages they are generating. Whereas uh, every time they generate something from Cabal, they actually parse it over so they ensure that it always looks the same. Cloud guys actually, uh, I'm not sure where they are using it, but I suppose the OpenStack is somehow using the spec cleaner tied in to generating the packages for Fedora and us, as, a, as in SUSE slash OpenSUSE. And now uh, Matej Cheek, one of the members of Pack Team, is converting patch packages semi-automatically using the spec cleaner with kind of hex code base to ensure that the old Python packages can be kind of streamlined to the new single spec format. Now, for features, what actually people often forgot that we have there, those are not enabled by default, but you can have fun with them, are conversions. So in a case you have an old spec file, you can actually tell it, tell the spec cleaner to convert all the dependencies to the new syntax of package config and bracketed something, Perl bracketed something, tech, cmic. Basically it has a binding list of conversions from current release leap, so now 42.2, and it will convert all the old style dependencies to the new ones. That means that later on your package should be perfectly fine to build even on Fedora or anywhere else. One another feature that's really useful is exclusion of spec cleaner. Basically in some cases you don't want to run it ever on your package. Take as an example GCC. Nobody would like to parse that blob at all. So you can put the, this comment in there and it will basically skip it out. And last big feature is basically code block detection. That means that you can actually use comments to actually put something together and ensure it stays together within the spec file and it won't be moved by any cleaning script. Or it can be used mostly for, for example, if you have LVM, you can split it into multiple parts and have common code blocks that are detected by the spec cleaner and ensure that they are same. You can see it now in the distribution if you check the LVM2 package, there are three spec files and they all have the common code blocks in there. Basically it's, it can be considered conditionals, but they are comments instead. And the last feature that spec cleaner actually has compared to the tool we are using now, the format spec file, it has a f really big test suite. At this point, I am not really sure how big it is, so let's take a look. Whoop, I closed the browser unfortunately. So now we are covering 92% of the code base is covered by tests. And there are really loads and loads of them. So at this point of time, 
these are various spec files containing features that are in the spec file, and we are making sure that nothing breaks when we are developing or breaking the stuff within the spec cleaner. So, apart from this, basically the rest is just formatting. Just remove something, add something, replace something. Overall, we also have a plans within the spec cleaner, which are kinda important-ish. So, first one is pretty bad. We want to replace the format spec file, and we have a GitHub issue for that. And unfortunately, we need to make sure that we are not running the spec cleaner on the maintained updates. Because if you imagine that the, you have a tool that does heavy changes within the spec file, even if they are not dangerous, that's something you want to avoid to happen within the maintenance window. And we are now not able to do that with OBS, so we are figuring out how to work around that. Another issue we have is a new RPM, has a new and lovely syntax for dependencies where you can use and, or, and other stuff, which surprisingly breaks all our tools we have. So that also needs a bit of work. Usually, mostly people, when they are using Spec Cleaner, they are complaining about the feature that ensures that all the variables are having curly brackets around them compared to commands. So, um, in minimal mode, this is already disabled, but I opened an issue to actually provide the separation to have another option that also allows the user to specify themselves. So, if you really hate curly brackets around the code or around variables, you can still override it even on a full run. And the last thing we are working now with Tomasz Czech is cleaning up preamble parsing to be more readable. It's working at this point of time, but unfortunately the class had something like 40, 40 kilos, and it was not really readable, so we are slowly reshuffling and re reformatting it to have it a bit more readable for anybody to actually join in. So that's basically what the spec cleaner is. And now how you could actually help and why am I giving this talk? Basically, uh, I fixed all the issues I or the packaging team had with it. So we are able to process all the packages we are maintaining, we are using. It can pass it, it won't break it, and it's fine. But if you are a package maintainer and the tool is actually breaking something for you, if you open a bug, we can fix it, we can create a test case, and we can make sure it will never break again on, in any fashion. So. Apart from reporting the bugs, of course, you can expand the test suite. So if you know that something is constantly breaking for you, just create a pull request and basically add into this folder in the spec cleaner basically another spec file that contains the code, how it's looking before, how it's looking after, and that's it. You don't even have to know how the spec cleaner actually works. Just before and after spec files. That's about it. And back to the proper window. Come on. And also, if you are the project maintainer and you want to replace something everywhere because you know everybody screwed up or majority of people screwed up or used some old macros, you can also add some replacement parts for this, for this in the spec cleaner. So it will be automatically replaced. It's actually pretty nice. The spec file is split into various areas. And basically, if you want to replace something in an install, you just find the install section and write any code for replacements you want to do in here. In here. Now it simply fix LA files and the install command. Nothing much. But if you found some common issue in there, just a simple pull request or a GitHub issue and we can make it work. The idea behind all this is to make sure that all the spec files are unified, ensure that they are running, working in correct fashion and basically in the long run the maintenance should be easier because everything looks alike. Now, how to actually find and report issues? Well, we have the GitHub page, which I opened in the other tab. So anybody can go there, report issues, create pull request. You can email me directly or you can contact us on the OpenSUSE factory. We are basically hanging out there because there are all the packages. So, apart from that, now we have yeah four minutes, so let's go for questions. And if you are not working at Suzy yet, as I see a lot of people here are, we are still hiring, so don't be afraid to apply.
So, questions, anybody? Hello. Um, I have a question on how to actually use this spec cleaner. I mean, I maintain a package or set of packages, and how I'm supposed to use it. I mean, is it run once or whenever I touch the spec file and I need to run it, or would it make sense to put it in as a part of, for, for example, continuous integration? So whenever we change something, it runs automatically or so overall, you can run it on your own, of course, just the spec cleaner and the parameters on the command line. Alternatively, uh, if you've seen uh, Peter's presentation about Haskell yesterday, basically they run it in a, as a part of the continuous integration. They do some cabal to RP, uh, cabal to spec, and then parse it with the spec cleaner. And there, are, there is also integration the same like you have the format spec file. That's run on each commit you do in the build service, if you have it installed. So the same way it can be injected as a spec cleaner, there is a package called uh, spec cleaner something something. I will have to enlarge the screen. Let's hope it will be fast. Yeah. So this is the spec cleaner, and this is basically shovel in replacement for the format spec file. This will ensure it will run on your, all your commits. Of course, the spec cleaner is more invasive than the format spec file. So you should not do it unless you really want to replace all the format spec file runs. But you can. OK, thanks. So anybody else? Anything? I don't buy it that much. Okay, so thank you for your time and have a nice rest of the conference.